feathers, lolly chop. Oh, what's bothering you now, Terrence? This is no time for a tea party. Uncle Amos is telling the story. Come on, or we'll miss it. Oh, it's always hurry, hurry, hurry with you. Yeah, turtles are supposed to take it easy. But Cotton, Uncle Amos is telling the story. You mean the story? Why didn't you say so? Let's go! <laughs> 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 Humpty Dumpty, I'm not. I'm Uncle Amos, the ache. So, you want the story? Then the story I give. It happened here in Pennsylvania, Dutch country, on this very farm, years ago when the animals were just animals. The farm was different back then. Poorer, hungrier, not so happy like. The winter had been a tough old blower. And the spring was coming in slow as a stubborn mule. Papa Doppler was the farmer. And Mama Doppler, the farmer's wife, was. <laughs> Love they had, but money they didn't. Soon they would lose the whole farm to the terrible Tobias Tin Whiskers. Where is Doppler? I know he hides somewhere. Pay what you owe, or I take farm. The Dopplers needed help. Help. More than help, they needed a wonderment. Ah, oh, such sounds from the hen house inside. Something to eat, under. <gasps> a baby! Mama, pinned on his somewhat, is a something. Read. Call me Peter Pass. And if you can, love me. But how? From where? For why? Oh, Papa, don't question when such a wonderment it gives. Ah. Uh. A wonderment? I sing a wonderment, I sing a cheer, I sing a happiness this time of year, I sing an April morn, a sky so fair, I sing a world reborn and everywhere, I sing a wonderment when winter goes, I make a joyful noise from head to toe. A joy that tells the world that we've come through. I sing a dream of spring and dreams come true. When my heart's a field of daffodil, and my head's an apple blossom tree, and my voice in love with everything sings out loud, sings out free. It sings a wonderment, it sings a cheer, it sings that happiness. At last is here, and what I'm singing now, you can sing too. Let's sing a wonderment for me and you. Ah, Peter Pass, a usual baby, was not. You see, usuals have to grow a full 12 months before they are a year old. Peter grew a year every month. So on his first birthday, he was 12 years already. And such a big 12. And such power. And such a worker. And such joy. The more he heard laughter, the stronger up he grows. <laughs> Soon the farm was the envy of everybody. The whole valley over. And I mean everybody. With the animals, he had a special bond. Ah, uh, it's nothing very special. Animals and humans are about the same. If you close in a name, you'd all be folks. Same as Mama and Papa Doppler. Why, sure. Sure is oaks make acorns, and Easter eggs have yolks. And animals more than animal-like, an animal can be folks. 
Like an overgrown canary With skin between each toe And no vocabulary Quack quack is all you know Today you're really lucky If human ways you choose A duck is more than ducky With a magic pair of shoes <laughs> We'll call you feathers Like it? I mean, I think that's just adorable Sure as a fake acorn that Easter eggs have yolks An animal's more than animal like An animal can't be false Your ears are long and furry Your back is hard as slate You're always in a hurry And you are always late That's very, very human So to be like human beings Here's a hat with a flower blooming And some sneakers and some jeans We'll call you Cotton and Terrence <laughs> well, of course, I didn't forget you. Here's a pretty hat and a fancy necklace. Or, uh, how about Molly Jock? Now, all of you, try out your talkers. Sure, sure as oaks make acorns, and Easter eggs have yolks, and animals more than animal like, an animal can be both. All you little guys, too? You can be Bill Bird. And you're Maxwell Mouse. Henceforth, you're Snail Sport. Anymore? You two rule the hen house. So how about Queen Bessie and King Bossy? Sure as oaks make acorns, and Easter eggs have yolks, and animals more than animal life. This year's payment by Easter or all mine. Mine! <laughs> yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Tin Whiskers has a mortgage on your farm? He's so rich, practically the whole valley he owns. But not for always was his pocket so much money full of. He was a simple farmer once, like us. And he grew crops as we do, plain and simple, by hand. But then some money he inherited, and a tractor he bought. Such a wonder it was. It could the work of a hundred farmers do. Our market prices with his could not compete. He sold us under. But why didn't you get a tractor? Broke. To afford a tractor, you got to have a tractor to make what a tractor costs in the first place. I think you're a lot better off than Tobias Toot. How'd he get to be Tin Whiskers anyway? Well, so much he loved his machinery that he went once to the big city, hired a plastic doctor and two motor engineers, and got himself made mechanical altogether. <laughs> As the farms fail, he takes them over. Off the animals and people he drives. Then everything he knocks down to make more room for his machines. Now, not only the valley does he own, but the town also. He bought it, bank and all. And after himself, he named it. And soon, our farm also to Tobias Tin Whiskers will belong. We'll raise that money somehow. How? We'd have to sell thousands and thousands and thousands of eggs. I know a way, if you'll all help. I'll help. I'll do it all by myself. We'll all help. First, we gotta go to a, a place I know. A sleeping place, a quiet place, far in the woodland deep. Awakens but just once a year, its promises to keep. A girl so fair doth linger there, ageless, sweet and true. 
And Mother Nature is the name by which she's known to you. Though I was but a babe in arms a year ago this night, she sent me forth and bathe that I should ease the doctor's plight. And as I left that magic place, her voice to me did sing, Return me cheer this very night, the dawn before the spring. I love you lad, so please return each dawn before the spring. Yes, this is the spot. But where's the pretty lady? Fireworks? No, a falling star. It's a message from his... his mom. It's... it's a contract. An egg contract. A contract to supply colored eggs to the Easter Rabbit himself. You know the Easter Bunny? Well, who do you think carried me to the Dopplers a year ago tonight? We'll be able to pay Din Whiskers. Why? Will the Easter Bunny buy lots of eggs? Lots? He'll buy thousands and thousands and thousands. Thousands and thousands and thousands? Well, uh, I guess I mean, uh, oh, uh, no problem. Uh, no problem at all. Oh, <laughs> maybe not for you, dear. I'll have to talk to the ladies. Well, those chickens sure did cooperate. And the other animals colored all those eggs. So by the night before Easter, there were thousands and thousands and thousands. And the magical Easter rabbit came and spirited them to the four corners of the world away. It was a joyous Easter morning. Everybody went to the best Easter breakfast ever. And after, Peter built a small stage in the barnyard. And to celebrate their good fortune, they gave for all of the neighbors a show. Stop such foolishness. Glad to see you, Farmer Tin Whiskers. Here's this year's payment. Uh, all here! You! You! If... If you don't make next year's payment, you lose farm! Ha! We'll make it. We have the egg contract. I... I don't get a contract. I am better farmer than you. <laughs> well, some folks think differently, I guess. I prove! I challenge you to plowing contest tomorrow at dawn in my South 40. Bring plow. Uh-oh. Never a tin whisked farmer trust. For the field he chose was a farm he once knocked down. An old well was there, hundreds of feet deep. And that tin sneak hid the well. Good and proper. Ready you are, set you get, so go already. Yeah! Yeah! Wow! Peter from the start was ahead. Such a wonderment. But wait, the well. Peter was to the old well coming. No, stop. Stop. <laughs> Well, the Dopplers and the neighbors got together and fished Peter Paz from the well out. They carried him home and in his upstairs room placed him, gentle-like. Is he? I, I, is he? You know, gone? His heart beats still, but slow somewhat. Such a strange, strange sleep. And he slept the summer away, and through autumn's glory, and winter's silence he slept. And even as March winds blow, still he slept. 
And when it was once more the dawn before springtime, the sad little animals all to the woodland went to ask Mother Nature's help. The cure for Peter's sleep sleeps itself. Within this I now hold. When this hatches, that which bursts from inside will awaken him. Well, what's inside, ma'am? You will see only when it hatches. This, this is too important to entrust to the setting hens. Feathers? You're right. We'll hatch it ourselves. We? You mean me and Terrence? Help hatch an egg? That's bird's work. We all love Peter, don't we? Then we'll all take turns. Yeah. And turns they took. Eight hour shifts the clock around. Ooh. Day and night. Night and day. And finally... Oh! I feel something stirring. Did you feel it before, Cotton? <sighs> I... I always get kind of numb the last hour or so. Here it goes again. I do believe it'll hatch by tomorrow morning. What will hatch? Inside every apple is an apple core. In every pretty peach is a pet. But we got an egg and nobody knows whatever is inside of it. Till it finally breaks the shell. Ain't nobody can tell what wonderment would dwell inside our egg, our egg, our egg, our egg. Could be a dragon or a dinosaur. Uh, egg? Could be a fairy queen. Uh, egg. Maybe it's a wish on a wishing star. Or, or a monster colored green. Could be a wizard or a wacky witch. Our egg. Or an elf from old Saint Nick. Our egg. Or a magic little tailor with a magic stitch. Or an ordinary chick. Oh no! Inside every pumpkin is a pumpkin seed. In every horse's mouth is a bit. But we got a name. And nobody knows whatever is inside of it. To work! Easter tomorrow is. And the Easter eggs we must in the farmyard pile for the bunny. Don't you budge now. If anything uh, starts popping, you let us know. I sure will. Because whatever is inside this egg will wake Peter. And we need Peter to save the farm. All the night through, they brought the eggs from the storage bins out and put them a pile in two. Hard work. Holding two jobs is harder even. So who can blame Terence for 40 winks catching? I got it. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, 
Well, that mysterious egg, it cracked open, and nobody's eyes ever such as something saw. This must be the place. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to your leader. <laughs> you heard of wonderment. This was a fundament. A clown shows a cookie bird. Very rare. In the whole world, only one. And the medicine he made was nothing but good laughing. The Doplins, they laughed. The animals, they laughed. All Easter morning, with laughter, was alive. And the glorious stuff, which hadn't for a whole year been heard to Peter Paz's bedroom, found its way. You see, laughter, simple laughter, the one thing that was for a whole year missing, was the only thing that could cure Peter Paz. <laughs> <laughs> Such a celebration for the belly, feasting, for the heart, loving. For the soul, laughing. Even Tin Whiskers laughed himself from the well up. Somewhat rusted and wonderment of wonderments. The magic laughter showed him that under it all, he was still Tobias Toot. He reformed and gave all the poor folks back their farms and poured himself now for the Dopplers he went to work. In fact, he took Peter's place, for Mother Nature called Peter Paz to other needy folk. His wonderment to bring, nobody the whole county round would ever Peter Paz forget. And when Tin Whiskers gave the town back, they made it a new name. Ah. Farewell, Peter Paz. Remember you, we will, sweetly. Miss you, we will, terrible like. And love you, we will, always. And what I'm singing now, you can sing too. Let's sing a wonderment for me.
I'm going to shoot the turkey for ye Thanksgiving. A gun of Thanksgiving, huh? Hunter, I'm a pilgrim. I wouldn't do the old thing, excuse me. Who, you? We have breed. Therefore, 
Why don't we eat at Joe's? Well, all right. We'll eat at Joe's. If you're the believe in ghosts kind, then this story is about one. And if you're the don't believe in ghosts kind, well, just for fun, this story is about one anyway. His name was Casper, and he was surely the most unusual ghost there ever was, or wasn't, depending on how you feel about it. Every night, the stroke of 12, his brothers and sisters scampered out joyously to frighten the folk of the neighborhood. But not Casper. He'd rather stay home and not frighten people which goes to show how unusual he really was. <laughs> Wake up, Casper! Time to scare people! <laughs> Casper just doesn't like to scare people. Yes, it sounds sort of silly, but... Well, he'd just rather make friends with them. decided to leave home to seek new environments where he might forget he's a ghost and make friends with the world. Thank <laughs> you. 
fellows at uh... <clears throat> out and away the most popular fellows at old PU are the three Dover boys Tom the fun-loving member of the trio Dick a serious lad of 18 summers plus a winter in Florida as related to the Dover boys in the Everglades and uh, Larry, the youngest of the three jerks, uh, uh, brothers. A gay outing at the park has been planned by the merry trio, and they are off to fetch their fiancée, dainty Dora Standpipe, at Miss Cheddar's female academy close by. With their usual punctuality, 
the boys arrive at the pointed hour of three. on their rollicking way, forced to pass a certain public house, a tavern of unsavory repute, our young friends meet the distressing situation with their usual uncompromising moral fortitude. We know that even now, within this very tavern, Dan Backslide, the former sneak of Rookford Hall, coward bully cad and thief, and arch enemy of the Dover Boys, squanders his misspent life. Hark! The Dover Boys! Trap them! Double trap them! They are escorting Dora Standpipe! Dear rich Dora Standpipe, how I love her! Father's money. Confound those Dover boys! Oh, how I hate them! I hate Tom! I hate Dick! And I hate Larry! They drive me to drink! Found them! But let us draw the curtain on this sordid scene and turn to more pleasant surroundings, where we find our young friends engaged in a spirited game of hide, go, and uh, seek. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. No, no! No, no, over here, over here. Over here, in here. No, no, in here. Now in here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. In here. Over 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 then Dora must be alone and unprotected! A runabout. I'll steal it! No one will ever know! Young scout. 
And that's just what it is. He'll not fail her, I'll bet you. Telegram for the Dover boys. Mrs. Tom, Dick, and Larry, carry away with Tavern Upper Bottleneck, New York. Sirs, quote, help! Unquote. Signed, Dora. 35 cents collect. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Hey, we're getting in a rut. Stand up and fight, you coward bully cat and thief. Oh, you haven't been thrashed enough yet, eh? And now it is time to say goodbye. Goodbye.
Thank <laughs> you. 